let's see about identity for mole also called as molar pregnancy what is meant by molar pregnancy or identity for mole this is a benign neoplasm of the chorion chorionic layer which has malignant potential that is which can turn into malignancy rarely this is nothing but a benign neoplasm of chorion with malignant potential chorion is a layer which covers the fetus as we all know the fetus is covered by two layers amnion and chorion so this arises from the chorionic layer this hydatidy form mole occurs because of the cystic degeneration of the chorionic villi resulting in the death of the fetus and then the chorionic villi gets converted into a large number of vesicles so the villi get converted into a large number of vesicles of different sizes since they resemble the hydatid cysts they are called as hydatidiform mole coming to the types there are two major types complete and partial complete mole and partial mole in complete mole there is no evidence of existence of fetus which means there is no fetal parts present or there are no fetal blood vessels seen whereas in partial hydatidy form mole there is focal trophoblastic proliferation with cystic degeneration along with areas of normal chorionic villi that is why this is called as partial mole in this a normal or abnormal fetus can be present so these are the types and uh, this is most commonly found in south asian countries the incidence is 1 in 1000 pregnancies next let's see the risk factors for molar pregnancy first will be extremes of age previous history of molar pregnancy there is 4 to 5 times increased risk in this current pregnancy the genetic studies have identified the composition of the mole is more common to be 46xx with the chromosomes completely of paternal origin that is from the father in the form of sperms and the ovum remains empty so most commonly the ovum is fertilized by a haploid sperm containing 23x or 23y
So the sperm is haploid which fertilizes the ovum and after fertilization this duplicates its own chromosomes. which happens after the meiosis. So, the chromosomes are homozygous. Which are entirely from the father. This is the most common pattern followed. Sometimes the chromosomal pattern can be 46 x y which is heterozygous and this occurs because of dispermic fertilization, fertilization of two different sperms. leading to 46 xy heterozygous type. The majority of complete moles are deployed whereas most of the partial moles are triploid. Next coming to the pathology, the villus pattern is maintained even though it or originates from the neoplasm of the chorion, the villus pattern is maintained and there is marked proliferation of both syncytial trophoblast and cytotrophoblast layer and also there is stromal edema seen. So, because of this increased proliferation of trophoblast, there will be increased levels of beta HCG secreted by the trophoblasts than in normal pregnancy. So, the key for diagnosis is very high levels of beta HCG. Next, the ovaries have multiple theca lutein cysts. due to large amounts of chorionic gonadotropin which overstimulate the lutein elements forming theca lutein cysts. This is the pathology. Then the clinical features. The clinical features include bleeding after a period of amenorrhea. This bleeding can be intermittent or continuous vaginal bleeding and uh, along with this bleeding there can be expulsion of grape like vesicles. Grape like vesicles can be expelled out along with this bleeding. Sometimes bits of tissue containing vesicles are passed along with this bleeding. Next because of increased beta HCG levels there will be hyperemesis gravidarum. Increased vomiting which results in dehydration. Next there can be signs of preeclampsia.
which are seen before 20 weeks of gestation. So, these signs include hypertension, albuminuria and edema which are seen before 20 weeks of gestation should also raise the suspicion of molar pregnancy. Next is hyperthyroidism, signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism can be present. Due to stimulation of thyroid gland, by increased levels of beta HCG, because this simulates the TSH, similar to the TSH. So, it stimulates the thyroid gland giving features of hyperthyroidism. These are the symptoms. Coming to the signs, the signs on general physical examination The patient may be pale, anemia is present, blood pressure can be raised and if it is associated with preeclampsia, there will also be presence of albuminuria. There can be tachycardia with or without hypotension. This is on general examination. An abdominal palpation. The uterus is enlarged more than the period of gestation. And the uterus appears boggy. Fetal parts may not be palpable. And fetal heart sounds not heard. For vaginal examination reveals absence of ballotment. and the presence of enlarged cystic ovaries. That's it in this video. In our next video, we will see about the diagnosis, investigations and treatment of molar pregnancy or high-dated deformed mole. Thank you.